and then we'll uh, then we'll start. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Welcome to Hangouts on Tuesday at electronicdrumlessons.com, home of the Drumming Power Source, your online self-guided expander resource. Now, expanders are confidence-building four-limb puzzles that our mind enjoys figuring out, enabling rapid progress with little effort. Hi, my name's Steve Blank, drum coach and songwriter. I'm here to help everyone everyone be a better drummer or a drum coach so whatever your drum topic or question um, you or my co-hosts have uh, we will that will be our top priority I'll also talk a little bit about my coaching and my certification programs uh, but probably not too much, uh, just a little. So let's say hello to our co-hosts for today, Tuesday, February 4th, 2014. Uh, co-host, when I say your name, drum something, say hello. You got 20 or 30 seconds. Um, let's start with Byron. Just, uh, Byron, how you doing? Hi, Steve. I don't have a drum set with me at the moment, but I'm doing great and listening in. Do you have any uh, favorite uh, mouth drums, vocal drums that you <laughs> like to? <laughs> Not at the moment, Steve. Well, all right. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Byron. Uh, Darnell. Hi. What's happening? I can go ahead and uh, not mouth drum, but I can go ahead and play a little something for you. All right. Yeah, and uh, I'm Steve, and I think I will. I think I do want to mouth drum something. Sweet. And silly, but you know, we got to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it is one of the things I said in my comment today that uh, drums uh, just might be the most fun instrument. I, I mean, I think most of us drummers don't wonder that. Um, but there probably are some other people out there, a couple of guitar players maybe that think they're having more fun. I don't know. Uh, uh, what am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly since electronic drums have come out, I couldn't imagine there being a more fun instrument. Um, even when there wasn't electronic drums, though, it was pretty convincing that drums uh, were the most fun. Now, what uh, the topic of today was, what are we going to do with Hangouts in the future? And I think we kind of come, came up with an answer during our green room. And it's, it is just going to be as much uh, interaction from our guests as uh, they want to provide. Um, I know for a fact that Darnell has some really interesting stuff he was just uh, talking about with uh, the way he set up his electronic kit um, with peripherals. And I have to admit, that is one of the coolest things about electronic drums. First, if you just get an electronic kit, it's already a huge amount of stuff. But then you can hook stuff to it, um, a little bit like an, a, an acoustic kit, except it's usually with electronics you get a lot more sounds and a lot smaller space and so you've got a keyboard and an alesis hooked up to your uh, rolling drums with a bunch of extra pedals I don't know you want to uh, take take the floor and explain what you got again sure I can go ahead and do a quick tour I'll do an upper and a lower tour on that one so on the, here on the left side I've got the alesis and actually I can go ahead and go down further on that one um, it has the inputs back here, so I can also trigger the bass drum on the Alesis. And you bring up a great point. So there's a, is there a pedal? Is there a pedal in there for the Alesis? It's got a bass drum pedal. It's a um, you have to use the um, like a sustain pedal. Yeah, right. It's yeah. but it's a it's a pedal kind of thing, a oh, cheap yeah. little bass a cheap little bass drum pedal. Yeah. Right, and then I can go ahead and use my second one. Right now I've got it for the hi hat. But eventually, I do plan on going ahead and taking that and triggering the snare drum with it. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so you can go ahead and do some left foot beating with it. Now, because we can't see your whole Alesis, and I, I'm sorry I'm being uh, no, no, interrupting no, okay. you, but we, uh, the Alesis has eight, 
eight pads, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, eight pads. And two pedals, eight pads and two right. pedals. So it's a it's right. a complete drum set in itself. Exactly. And the only thing I did unique with the Elisa's, even though you can't see it, um, next time I'm going to try and swing around the uh, camera a little bit more. I turned it so it's actually like on its side so that I can actually go ahead and hit everything in a smaller space with my left hand. So. Then bring it gotcha. around. I got my, um, obviously, the big rolling set, which is a standard. The only thing I did here differently was I moved the hi-hat to the middle. I can get to it just as easy with either hand. Now, did that, have, did that decision have anything to do with the Elisis, or it just was the better place to put it? You know what? It really had less to do with the Elisis and a lot more to do with just being on these hangouts with you. And most of the time, while you're talking about things and doing things, I'm also looking and paying attention to your physical layout. And more and more, I kept on thinking to myself, okay, what parts of the drum set do we have set up? Because traditionally, it was the only thing that could happen. Yeah, right. And the hi-hat was a perfect example. Why was it over here all the time? Because it was foot activated. And yeah, right. There yeah. you go. Your, your left foot, just that's the only place your left foot is, so it had to go over there. Right. And so I, th I was sitting there one day, and I thought to myself, okay, you know what, though? With the left hand, if I want to go ahead and write on the left hand, I've got it right here. On the other hand, if I go ahead and I want to ride with the right hand, this way... You don't have to play cross all the time. Exactly. Cross exactly. Yeah. So about the only other thing i got going on is I have the double bass down here at the bottom. I've got an effect pedal that I run everything through, so I do have the ability to go ahead and pull some effects on things. So I have echo back or flanging or whatever distortion. Down here, I have a sustain pedal, and that's the reason why I have the keyboard. But about the only thing I have different on the drums, and we talked about this too, I put another bass drum up here. This, again, goes to exactly what you said about why electronic drum sets are more fun. Because I can put a 24-inch bass drum right here in a little pocket. So... And literally, when you when somebody yeah, if someone's listening to that and not watching you, they would be just wondering what the heck? How's he pulling that off? Exactly, <clears throat> exactly. So then over here on the side, I do have it mitted into the keyboard, um, and I use that to trigger basically like. Sounds. Let me go ahead and get a pure sound here. Okay. Nice. And that's it. <laughs> oh, and I have a sustain pedal for right down mm. to the keyboard. So for those longer sounds, like for instance, one of the things that I'm playing around with, and then I'll let it go real quick. I'm taking a sound that would be like, for instance, let's take this sound here. That's a nice one. Okay, what I can do with that is I can go in here and change it to mono instead of poly. And, of course, the whole thing that happens with mono is the fact that what you end up doing is it's one note that plays at a time. Well, what's cool is if I go ahead and I use a sustain pedal, only one note is going to trigger, so I get legato. Gotcha. Yeah. So it has its uses. And that's me. Yeah, now while you were doing that last thing, it, because of the the way of the sound was, it made me think of a voice. 
and it has a little bit of a, a low voice, a human voice kind of sound to it. And it made me wonder about this other thing, <clears throat> about trying to uh, vocalize over your playing there. Oh, so yeah. You, you know, boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. See, I don't have your sounds. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Just to try to uh, add another voice, a, con a, a contrary voice. I don't know. No, I, you mentioned it about two months ago, and ever since then I've really thought about that, the whole idea of, like you said, the fifth limb, which I think is like the coolest idea. <laughs> you know, taking that voice, and while you're playing, boom. Yeah, as long as you can make so many sounds and layer them, and and because you've got stuff like sustain and and you know different tones, you really don't have to fill in with a lot of notes, a lot of hits. Oh, that's so, yeah. You can so, make it how difficult it has been to learn that. You know, because you've done this. And, oh yeah, and I love filling yeah. in. I, I love filling in every little gap with another hit. That's that's what I actually like to do. But. Now I know I don't have to, you know. It's, right, uh, and it's a difficult thing to learn. And you said something which I loved. You said drummers have more fun. And I was thinking about that the other day. You've said this. You said when your kid is set up through MIDI, you only have a certain number of notes to hit. So the natural question somebody would say is, well, why don't you just play keyboards if that's what you want to do? Because it's not. It's yeah. this. It's this that matters. Yeah, and it, the whole energy of it is so different. I do play keyboards, right. and I, I've never felt the way I feel when I drum on a keyboard. I mean, how that doesn't even make sense in a way. Exactly, and the playing isn't the same. <laughs> There's you just know? it's just not as physical. The physical nature of drumming is 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 like dance, or it's a physical expression. Playing most other instruments is a really more technical. It's a more refined skill drumming is um, it's really free I mean it's really anyone can hit something anyone can hit, anyone can hit something so and it brings with it a whole new set of techniques we were talking before about the flams it means something so different when you're doing it like this but as we were just discussing with the flams you can go ahead and say I'm playing a flam and think you got it covered or you can go ahead and look at it and say what is really going on there and truly give it its due and make it musical. There you go. Well, I'm glad you, so glad you say that because that is probably the main reason I want to teach drums is that as I went through my life, I heard a lot of drummers that were not musical. And I didn't think they wanted to play that way. I always thought, you'd want to play musically and so someone who wasn't playing musically literally had never learned to they never they never experienced that that next level it's the next level any keeping time i mean uh, you know the 45 years ago when i was being trained as a drummer i was trained to be a timekeeper and that's what supposedly drummers were supposed to do but that's so basic, and now we've got so much electronic timekeepers. Keyboards have timekeepers. Everything's, uh, you know, electronic time is is easy, and so we don't have to be timekeeper. You know, you go in the studio, you got you got fake time. You got you, you know, it's not human time anymore. It's it's mechanical time. So so the the truth is, we're really not timekeepers anymore. We're we we have to do that too. But the truth is, is everybody in the band has to keep time. I mean, we're not the only ones. So the, the demands on a drummer today, to me, are either you can be musical or you get to not be in a band. I mean, <laughs> well, no, I agree. I, I agree with that completely, you know, because you just said it. There's a, remember when drum machines first came out? Oh, yeah. And I love that. This is when I love that I'm at least 150 years old. Because <laughs> right. drum machines came out, and within 10 years, every drummer had been replaced by a machine. 
But what's the coolest thing now with all of these bands? They go on. I saw Bone Thugs and Harmony. Do you know what they were going ahead and they were showing? They were showing that they were playing with a live drummer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> because they realized that part of it needed to be back. It wasn't because he was playing his beats. Of course not. The drum machine did that. Why did they have him? Because he was playing his musicality. That's yeah. Well, and why did they, uh, I didn't really watch it, but I hear tell there was a drum solo. I think you commented on it on, in the Super Bowl. Um, the drummer did a drum solo? Um, I saw the I saw the, when they were talking about that. That was on the LinkedIn thing. Yeah. I guess yeah, Bruno Mars was saying, I didn't watch it, but I heard somebody was talking about it. Well, just the whole idea that it would be interesting to have a drum solo at the halftime show on the Super Bowl. I mean, why is that? I guess drum solos are cool, right? Yeah, and the thing about it is you can have that or you can have a drum machine doing a drum solo. Okay, well, why is it that that's not a fun? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. How many people how many people are going to need a bathroom break right around then? You know. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's because of that musicality. No different than anybody else. I think that's what it is. It showed that we are musicians, just like everybody else is a musician. Mm. We couldn't be. We couldn't be replaced. And it, and most musicians know they can't drum, and so I think from in the musician world, drummers get a lot more respect than in the the normal world. I think people have a tendency to think you know drumming is is easy, but I don't think drumming's been easy for a long time. It's it's basic. But you have a lot. There's a lot of work to get, you know, to, to get the number of skills that you'd want to, you know, to to be happy. You know, you gotta you gotta work at that. But in, right, yeah, and it's kind of weird. I think you know any, and it, I've done it many times where on a first on a first lesson, um, somebody could play a beat and a fill. In fact, I, I always <laughs> like getting the first time student to be able to do one and two and three and four. You know, try to get that, and even try to open up that high, that high hat if you can. And so, I can get that in, to most students within 30 minutes. But it, it's kind of a tease because, you know, let's say if we wanted to get to 16th notes with our bass drum, that might take another year. <laughs> right right exactly you know so so we make that one really really easy thing in a matter of minutes but there's something about getting the real finer I mean of course when you you want to have a fast right foot right when you start learning to drum you want to have your yet we talked about it before it feels like our feet are far away you know when you're first learning a kit and stuff and so it is. Um, it's tricky to get our feet feet going, um, and that's another. You know, now I'm going to bring in expanders. It's time to mention that uh, expanders take some condition, some limitation, some struggle, something that's difficult, and comes at it from a bunch of angles so that that thing can become not only stronger but possibly even a, a, a strength, a new strength. And now we have a new base level of, of um, abilities that we play and literally become a new drummer by turning a weakness into a strength. Uh, it's not really that hard. I also like to equate it to like if you have a sore back or a sore muscle, it's the kind of thing where we can focus right on that sore spot, but it seems to be irritating. See, we focus on the sore spot, and that's irritating. We have to kind of move around the sore spot to make the uh, natural... Uh, because it's difficult for us, that means there's, a, there's some kind of a blockage. There's some kind of a something that's keeping that hard. If we... difficult, I should say. If we keep approaching the difficulty head-on, we basically just reinforce the weakness we have. So we have to not, this is my thinking anyway, we have to not do that. We have to not 
go straight on and we have to look at this and say there's a list of a series of similar movements that when I work on them I'll come back to this and I'll be better at it as opposed to just working on the sore spot please comment no what you said was a good example of that and I like when you're talking about with the double bass drum because the standard way of thinking is Okay, let's say you're playing and you can't get that. The standard way of thinking about it as a drummer is you go. And you do that and you do that and you do that and you do that and you do that. Well, that's nice except for one thing. It takes forever and when you get done, you can only go. And okay. a lot of times, i got to add, a lot of times too, by doing it that linear way, it lacks feel. It lacks emotion. Right. We didn't. We didn't really learn it. We basically no. just forced it, and our <laughs> brain. And our brain is That's now. That's a perfect way to say it. Yes. Yeah. Our, our brain isn't happy with it, but it's we're it's listening to our command of do it, and right. and that's not music. That's and it's not it's not musical, and it's not a way to learn to be musical. That's a way to learn to be a very staccato, choppy drummer and, and that's the you know and it's not fluid it's not it's not pleasant it's uh it's the way most of us learned though this is the bad part it's well, the way yeah. most of us learned I mean that's how I was taught I mean here's the page you're supposed to learn it's got these on it and then when you finish learning this we'll go to the next page there wasn't right. a there wasn't a oh by the way if you have trouble here refer to appendix C D and E to you know, I mean, there was none of that. There was just do this page. <clears throat> I mean, so you take in the expanders, and well, you're the expanders expert, so you got your double, you got your hit that you're trying to work with. Pull it into the expanders, and how would you approach it? Okay. Well, the first thing that obviously comes to mind is the idea that when we work on one side, we're automatically kind of working on the other side, but if we start with our strong side to work on, our weak side will continue to stay behind. So the first thing I would do is want to do, I would just want to try the same thing with my left foot just to see how far my, see my left foot is, Now, of course, the pedal's a lot different, too, and I'm not making an excuse, but it's, you know, i got to get used to playing double bass with, or, uh, you know, 16th notes right. with my left foot, which basically I pretty much don't do. Okay, so it was, you know, it was okay. That was actually uh, pretty good, actually. <laughs> so, so that would be the first thing I would do is, like, say to my right foot, see, my left foot can do it already, so you better keep ahead. It's kind of like that. It's just like, how can I, that's the first thing I would think of to take the pressure off the right side. Now, the next thing I think of is a double hit is obviously two singles, and it's not a triple. So we've got singles, doubles, and triples. So the first thing, the thing I would try to do next is maybe just practice some uh, singles to get my um, see, I, I call it waking it up. I want to wake my feet up. I want to wake them up so that they they're 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 ready to do the harder thing, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now that we've done that, now let's go ahead and try triples. And again, I'm going to try starting with my left foot. My left foot's slow, so I gotta gotta focus. Get that left foot going. But I can already feel my right foot just staying way ahead and being being pretty sharp. And I can tell, I mean, I already know. So my left, my right foot's pretty strong. My left foot. 
not. So now, since I've been able to identify that difference, I might want to try doing that same thing with both feet together. Very tough. Hmm. There's something about the balance that throws your balance off. Yeah, I don't like being unbalanced. But that, that challenge is really good. Yeah. And again, I'm just making this up as I'm going, right? You never heard me talk about doing double bass, both feet no. together, right? No, so, and I, it's so funny because I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's a challenge here. And I'll so that's it's kind of like the goal is to find these spots that are really challenging. And so if you make that really challenging spot 100% better or 200% better, right, then mm -hmm. you're better. You got better. You just turned something that was really weak into something that's eh, medium strong, maybe. Yeah. Changing your ability as a drummer, of literally bringing a whole new drummer to the next time you sit down. Theori I, we're, theoretically, we're, theoretically bringing a new drummer. I mean, I think it, you'd still have to, there is a part of this that we don't talk about too much that has to do with confidence. Confidence and creativity are, to me, they're like, you know, they're like twins. Um, we, it's, we don't feel creative if we're not confident. Um, confidence is a place that, that's kind of like the doorway to the zone. And once you're in the zone, you only want to be creative. You only want to try something new. So the path to creativity and confidence are the, is the same path. It's, it's the same path. It's kind of weird. Um, but it's important, it's important, I think. And the way we get confidence is we play things we can play well more, and we play things that are really difficult or challenging or that we're poor at, we play them less. And the way you play those weak things less is when you find one, you work on it and make it no longer a weak thing. See? I mean, it's, it's really that it's really basic like that and so by having less weak things we now have a natural elevation of confidence and through that and because we just proved to ourselves I can do this now the chance that hey I can throw that in there you know I can throw that in there you could be in the middle of something really complicated oh yeah that cool thing oh, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. but until you right. practiced it there's no chance of throwing in the cool thing well, there's a chance, but it's a low, it's a small chance. Yeah, but it's also how it's going to be done too, because you're going to be thinking to yourself, okay, you know what? Let me go ahead and give this a shot, and maybe it will, maybe I won't. As opposed to having complete confidence that, because then you can think about it musically. You're like, okay, yes. I'm using this for this reason here. Right. You, in fact, it comes to your mind in enough. Uh, advance notice so that you actually can do it musically because you already heard what it's going to sound like. As weird right. as that all sounds. But that's what we do. That's what we do. We're in our little groove and it's time to be expressive or creative and we hear we hear it a little before we actually do it and then we do it and we hear it again. And then in a way when we're on the next measure we're thinking back was that pretty cool or was that not too cool? You know, and then we, we actually hear <laughs> you know, it enough. We hear right. it another yeah. time. We hear it another time. So yeah. you plan when it. You... you plan it and you hear it. You play it and you hear it, and then afterward you check it and you hear it. Right. You know, I mean, I love the way that you said that because then you're thinking musically the way that somebody who's playing like a saxophone is. They're gonna go ahead and they're gonna listen to what they did, and if they liked it, they're gonna be like, well. How many times have you heard that in a saxophone solo where they go ahead and it's like da 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 and then they know that that was cool so now they expand it the going the next time around da 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 yeah yeah exactly we, we do this we should be able to do the same things as drummers and obviously just playing a melody is almost two-dimensional compared to the three or four-dimensional stuff drummers do 
not to take away from the talent it takes to play a melody on a saxophone. I don't want to do that. But it's very linear in comparison. The drummers, we're, we're thinking on several different levels at the same time. You've got, you know, we've got melody and rhythm. We play melody and rhythm at the same time. That's what we do. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, we're enhancing, we're enhancing both sides. We're, we're playing to the bass player. Let's say this for, it's through a real simple example of playing to the bass player. Uh, and then uh, there's some melody. Da 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 da. So we're playing. We get to play the rhythm. We get to play the melody, and then we get to fill in where appropriate to hook the pieces. It's a uh, and if I we can agree. and if we yeah. can if you can if you can make up a melody while you're playing to your drums and then get it out of your mouth, that's a pretty cool thing. I don't know. I don't know how good that really was, but it sounded musical to me. And that's the real point: is to be musical, not be, you know, stuck. Right. Exactly. You take it and you move it into those three dimensions, exactly like what you just said. You know. And then try now with something else that I've thought about lately is how what one of the things that drummers can do, and it's basically because of the four limb things, is we can sound like more than one. I think I talked about it last week. We can sound like more than one person. That's another cool thing drummers do. Yes. <laughs> you know, in fact, sonodiddles, sonodiddles are a great example of that. You know, if you're doing, and you know, if you could, that sounds like two guys. I mean. You know, and that's, and that's, right, exactly, and that's the whole point, you know, or how many drummers do you know? You did it, you know, you play that basic beat under you. Up, up, up here, you're really thinking to yourself, what are you going to do over it? Sure, and that's yeah. that's two guys going. It's like two brains. You you're operating two brains, and now you make me think about my set number five. Uh, I originally called it M and M, after the two most difficult women in my life. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and so I made the most difficult drum set to play. You know, with that, <laughs> with in honor, in 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 deepest honor of them. Um, so now I've got you know. I've got the, the snare on the, the left foot, and the tabla kind of set up on the snare. And then standard toms, timbales here, uh, splashes, splashes here. I got a regular cymbal, regular cymbal, another low tom, and then because even though this is a weird hi-hat and it's, it's a snare drum, I still have an open hi-hat. So that's, that's this set. get a lot of sound going and sound like a percussion section a little bit. Which is really, really nice. And it's so funny because I had something similar that kind of like happened, happened. You know, I've got this hooked up to the uh, MIDI, and right now the Korg does have drums as one of its sets. But because of the way that the notes are, it actually triggers it completely off. Oh sure, yeah. You know, yeah. No, it's, you know, that's something that you bring that up. It seems like whoever programmed drums on keyboards, whoever does that isn't a drummer. <laughs> so what I was finding was fun was okay. So I go ahead and I have this set, 
and I have this set, which is... Okay. Wow. So we put the two together, and what do we end up with? Now, I like that right there. So all of a sudden, if I know what I'm doing... You reminded me of Carter right there. That's awesome. It's great to see someone riding with their left hand so smoothly. But once again, what did I do? I did exactly like you just did. This would have been the weak hand if I didn't go ahead and say with expanders, hold on, everything gives equal play. Well, and then how, you know, how much fun is it to go crazy with your right hand like that then, too? You know, it's actually... Oh. When it's better. Happened, it's yeah. Yeah. When and the full the really fun thing was I didn't know that this was here until just now when we were playing. Oh, if great. I didn't have that confidence, it would have been like, oh well, I can't take this and start building with it musically. Oh man, you're making such a great point. This is the thing that confidence does to you because as soon as you hear that new noise, you are inspired by it to be creative as opposed to shut down by it because I, oh, no, you know, the Thank fear you. of Perfect. I don't know what to do. You know, and Not funny, that at all. Yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, the first thing I thought about was, oh, my God, okay, I can see me out there with this. So do I go ahead and get this over here so that now I can go ahead and do it? No. Keep it there. <laughs> and get about my job of making it so that I can do that. There you go. Yeah, and then actually, because, see, there's another factor here. There's something about that that grabbed you, not because it sounds like everything else you've played, but just the opposite. This sounds <laughs> yes. somehow new. Somehow this was new and worthy of this creative juice. Dump the juice on this because it's cool. And so then you just jump on it and with confidence and... I don't know. It just see that's what's really amazing. <laughs> our human what? minds, what our minds are capable of. You know, when you really put yeah. yourself in a such a, a place like that, where you know, in these milliseconds, you can come up with stuff. Well, decide decide whether or not you really want to try that or not. Then go ahead and try it. Listen to it. Decide whether or not you really liked it. Decide whether or not oh, should I try it this way or should I change it? Right. Yeah. You know, and all that's going on just so fast. Herbie Hancock had a great example of that. It was um he was playing someplace and Herbie Hancock, you want to talk about fluidity, there it is. There Control. You go. He was playing on a grand piano and all of a sudden one of the keys had malfunctioned and it was giving off this weird tone. He didn't change his solo so that he was avoiding the key. He, he used all it. of a sudden, yes. He awesome. used it and used it and recreated musically what he was doing. And just what, that's just kind of what's happened to you just now. When you went wailing on that thing, you heard that sound, and it just right. inspired you to, to move with it, to, to use it. Yeah, but um, you have to have that confidence, plus what you said the expanders give you. Not just the confidence, you also have to have the ability. There you, you go. Yeah. It, if you practice the move to a point of confidence, then when you're playing, that move is now available to you. Now, if you're just playing along and you come up with the idea, oh, I want to do that, and you didn't actually practice it, well, it won't be smooth. I mean, maybe with some percentage of drummers, like less than 1% of us that don't need to practice, maybe that does come out smooth. But for most of us, if we want it to be really smooth and musical, it's best if we practiced it before the song was playing, before we're on stage, before the band needs... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then, so that's the other side of what you're saying about the expanders. The reason to do them is because when, you, when it's time to be there, to be as available and present as you need to be, 100%, let's say, 
when you need to be 100% present, the only way you can confidently be 100% present is if you've practiced a whole heck of a lot of the drum moves that you might need. And so the more we practice the, the, the obscure movements, the more all movements are available to us. And that's you know, so something like a crossover is unorthodox. <laughs> Oh, that's really loud, isn't it? But you know what? That was cool because of the fact that it sounded really neat. <laughs> well, I did set it up that way. Like, I went and started my software. So now, uh, similar to Darnell having uh, the peripherals, my main peripheral in my kit is my laptop running Reason software, which has, uh, you know, tens of thousands of potential sounds in it. So uh, this particular... This is part of Steve Illusion. Well, it's not actually triggering perfectly, but the idea that So if I turn the reason off on this, this is the kit I'm playing. But, you know, if I add that little goofy noise in there, and that's, I can mix it in a little bit more. I don't know. It's just so fun when you can just go and layer and blend the sounds like that. That's, oh, yeah. That's cool. I mean, <laughs> the, I don't know. For me, that is just, like, so much fun. That's all I can say. It's just well, we're so used to we we come from a world where the big drum sounds, you know, like that. The little drum sounds like that. The big cymbal sounds like that. It's all it sounds exactly like it looks. That's the thing. It is. Now they they can sound any way. They can be anything. You got a little, you got a little six inch bass drum up there that you play with your right hand. Right. You exactly. Know? You know, it's. Uh, <laughs> well, it's so cool. You know, it's uh, it's all different. Yeah, you know, I got I got a similar thing over here where I've got this used to be the original hi hat. On this kit, this was this little seven incher here. You know, that was the original hi hat. And now, I mean, I make it. I like it much better. I like it much better now. Yeah. And I still have a nice hi hat. Well, listen, listen to that. So that was it. That was that, nice. <laughs> we just find a sound. You just find a cool sound and make something out of it, right? That was actually really sweet. I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I we may have to work with that. Yeah, thank you. I was just doing the same. So this is kind of weird because this is a bass drum and it's a hi hat and this left side. I never would have guessed that's what that would have sounded like, but then you play it. So because I made a new instrument, I turned my electronic kit into a new instrument, and so now I got to play it a little different, right? It's 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 a little sensitive over here, and it's a little cooperative over here. In fact, this is very sensitive. So I can I can throw off the uh, timing really easily because the actual up. Uh, s stops the pedal. That's weird. So I can, if if I keep it really staccato and in time, it sounds very mechanical, like a like a machine, right? But I can also mess it up a little, and you can hear my humanness. I don't know. It's fun. That's cool. <laughs> that is like so much fun. <laughs> but you know what? What I loved about it was all of the different nuances that you said you needed to approach it with in order to make it musical. And I know we keep on saying it over and over and over again, but if you don't have those things in your toolkit, you know, I mean, I That's... know you've seen it and I know I've seen it, where you get people and they don't do that. And yeah, they've got their kit set up. And so 
how many times have you seen where a drummer is got his kit and it's set up like that? And what does his drum solo end up sounding like? Okay, probably then, not. Probably not like that. And then. Okay. So what? So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like anything okay, you want. But at the same time, each part of my drum solo is still going to be. Because that's all you've ever got confident with, is what your point yeah. is, I think. You know, and you're not listening. List. Like you said, you heard the nuance there with, this, with the hi-hat. So I listen. Okay, wait a minute. Ah, I heard. Yeah. Nice. You know? <laughs> no, really. That was, that was really... You know, it's really uh, mellow, you know, and it's, it was nice. It was just right. Yeah, but uh, all of the nuances right there, so that's the difference. Um, that's why I say this is the future of it. I am so serious. You know, you can, I think this is one of the places where us um, electronic drummers and acoustic drummers, I think this is the, one of the main uh, controversial points. Uh, I think acoustic drummers believe that acoustics by their nature, have more uh, natural, um, you know, overtones, uh, additional ways of playing. You know, you can get so much more dynamics out of an acoustic instrument. But at the same time, when you consider that I can make this one tom sound like 5,000 different things, and some of those will also be very nice and... Uh, will have some nice uh, uh, acoustical uh, tendencies or or techniques I can use on that. And at the same time, on another kit, that tom might be maybe boring, but the cymbal has some interesting thing going on. Um, the, when you get into electronics, it's a lot more of a surprise. You can't, and I think that's, to me, this is a point I'm trying to make, I think acoustic drummers don't really want to be surprised, well, and they and, and it's okay with them to be to feel comfortable in this set in these sounds, and I'm comfortable here, and so that I can't really change them. These are the one; these are the sounds I want, and I don't want them to change. And you and I, we got a dial, and we want them to change. Right, exactly. And I actually think that it plays into everything. You know, I was sitting there and all of a sudden I heard that and I said to myself, you know what? <laughs> okay, so what would be a drum beat at that point? I personally see that as a drum beat. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. I do well, see that as a drum beat. Well, there's a melody in there, in that stuff somewhere that's going to be cool for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I didn't hear enough to, to pick it just yet. Oh, that makes me... <coughs> oh, here's the voices. <coughs> so these kind of go together a little bit. <coughs> Yeah, whatever. And you know what? I'm sorry. To me, that's a drum beat. That is a drum beat. I'm it's, it <laughs> seems to me like if that was in a song, people would listen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, play, play it. I'm sorry. I think that's drum beat. Oh, yeah. Well, those sounds right there are really interesting, what you got going on right now. That's my uh, pan mallet. And then I have a little bit of echo on it, so that's without the echo. 
in the chorus. So a little bit of chorus on it. <laughs> talked about with your expanders and counting and I was taking a five note pattern and playing it as a four note beat. Oh. Mm. So that was the reason why each each time around a different note was getting bent on the pitch bend. Gotcha. I didn't yeah. really I didn't really notice that but now that you mentioned it now I can kind of hear uh, that you were doing that. Mm -hmm. As you were playing just there and you were all over the place and you got all these different sounds I was reminded of whatever it was before you got your kit set up again, or when you first got your kit set up, and um, you you know you weren't really playing it, it was like uh, you just had the pads there. And yeah. It's yeah. like it's like uh, okay, yeah, I, I I know Darnell's a drummer, and you know I know there's there's some good stuff coming up, and now here you are with all this great electronic stuff hooked up and making great sounds, and uh, I was I just feel good that I was right. You know what? And you're right. I don't know. I went through something and I came back out of it and I'm good now. But what's fun is, I mean, I was playing the other day and I just took everything and I was moving around with it and it was just craziness. It really mm. was. It was so much fun. So I don't know. I mean, if you want my two cents, you even if you don't have that and you still have this electronic drum still beat it. Yeah, right. Oh, sure. I'm just it's just it. yeah, it's just a, one of these things like the extent or the limit of sounds that we can create with our electronic kit. And that's the place where it gets a little gray. Is there is there a limit there? I don't, oh, I'm, I, I don't yeah, think and I think so. about that placement. I think about the placement. You know, you like you have what you have. I've rethought about what a hi-hat really is. That to me is a heck of a lot more interesting. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's some of your, uh, that's what you were just doing right there to me make kind of defines your a piece of your style yeah. uh, where you where you are advanced beyond most drummers um, that's that's real smooth um, oh it feels like it's uh, it's winding down I know we're coming up on an hour um, and you did make me think of something but it, it left my brain so it probably isn't important I think um, oh uh, thought maybe since Byron you hung out with us this long uh, Darnell and I kind of really got off on some yeah, uh, we went, electronic we and this. musical tangents <laughs> there uh, just wondering how, how entertaining that came off as a, uh, for the third party out there you've been pretty busy <laughs> okay <laughs> well I don't know what that means, bro. That, that means they're going to start throwing money. I think that's what that means. It's, it's any minute. Just hold your hands out there now. This okay, time. we're good. <laughs> um, yeah, we've been busy. Um, trying to make music. I think that's the thing. Where We approach drums like they can be music. And um, I don't know. I think Darnell and I both did a good job of making our drums be musical today. Oh, and yeah. That's, I and agree. I, and I think that makes this, for me, it was one of our more entertaining shows just because it's one thing to drum and it's another thing to make music. Oh, and that was the point. The thing, the um, point, the, uh, the, the discussion you started, I think you started, who, what musician would you like to play behind or, yes. or something yeah. like that? Yeah. And, what's, and I'm going to throw this in at the end here because it's, it's pretty egotistical, I suppose. But in reality, that person is myself. For me, and I proved that when I did my album Steel Tracks, where I just double, triple, and up to eleven tracks um, on each song, and just kept 
find another kit, to, um, figure out what to do, hit the record button. <clears throat> uh, and I made 14 songs, and I love that entire album. Like, it's my, you know, it's everything. It's my, it's everything inside me. All my greatest drumming is all in one album, with which has, uh, what would it be, somewhere 60, 70 different tracks, individual tracks, all squashed together into 14 songs. Um, cool. But definitely my favorite. Be now here's the reason. When I play something, now this is the part where I think you can really relate, especially with the electronic drums. When we play something and it comes off musical, it's it's musical and we like it. When we listen back to it, we still like it, right? And right. we, whenever we listen to any music that we like, we kind of want to drum. Okay. So right. now I'm listening to something that I just made up and I kind of like it and now I switch to a different kit and I'm hitting around and trying to find what goes with this and then I find something now I know what I just got done playing right and I like it right and now I'm gonna play on top of that and express on top of that that's oh, that's, cool. yeah, that's the thing. that's the best and then another layer and then another layer and it just gets so intense sometimes um, and then you go and mix it. Then you want to go and mix this stuff and make sure you hear everything. Oh man, it's 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 amazing uh, process to go through and drum to your own stuff really really diligently to make songs like that. Um, That's cool. I would advise it. To, I would advise it to any drummer to try at least once. Now we can do it a little bit with our electronic kits because well, I'm pretty sure your kit will record the can you can record with it too uh, the sequencer section um you know what i've actually never done it so i don't know <laughs> i'm prob I possibly can i know i have backing tracks that i can play with but i think i can also record i'm just not sure although that's kind of funny that you mentioned that because i'm going to look it up real fast now on my my section where it says sequencer i have a stop play and record button so I think oh, the record button is You're absolutely right. There it is, record. Yeah, if you've got a record button, you can record MIDI. You can record your drum play. I'll be darned. Huh. You and know what? And it's it's really not that hard. I haven't even I haven't even like that's okay. Huh. Cool. <laughs> I think I might uh, be taking advantage of that. I never you know, and the, it. the weird thing is right now. Well, that was bad. <laughs> right, right now, right now, I don't, uh, I can't. It, I'm not making it work. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. That's, oh, maybe I got to push both of them at the same time. No. Okay. Now, well, this is one of the things I was trying to show. How because, um, well, that's weird. So different kits play different, but not all of them. Ah, oh, that's now that I didn't know. That was that was silly, but anyway. Um, no, actually, that sounded pretty funky. I like that. <laughs> maybe uh, we could end with that little piece of music. I don't know what else we might want to talk about. Uh, you got something on your mind? Uh, no, I like. I actually really, really like today's uh, hangout a lot. It was nice. I think that it was something that you know it was. Just, it was. We needed to go around with that one at one point. So I felt good with that musicality and how you bring it into the playing and everything that's necessary for it. Yeah, and as a um, continuity for a hangout, you and I really, we were really in sync today, so I'm really happy with that. We, <laughs> we, you know? We took, the, we took the same energy and moved in a different place. <laughs> yeah, but it was all, it was like I we agree. really... Yeah, we did a great job. So uh, thank you for that, uh, Byron. Thanks for your your moral and um, financial support. Because I felt you throw those dollars when you know when, you... <laughs> when we were getting busy. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Well, I'm going to hit the uh, end broadcast button. Um, you guys, okay. we can we can say goodbye in a minute, but uh, goodbye, folks. Uh, hope you enjoyed the hangout.